welcome to the Incomplete Guide to Film podcast, where we're learning filmmaking together. I'm your host, Alex Pinnell, and today we're going to be talking about finding your format. So, when you're trying to figure out how to uh, create online content, it's important to find a format that works for you. For me, I'm sticking to the podcast for the most part right now, and a bi-weekly podcast and a, a weekly blog seem to work out pretty well for me. You know, I'm, I'm not getting a ton of subscribers or views, but I am getting content out there. And actually, at the beginning, that's the important part, getting quality content out there, or at least the best that you can, that you can do. Um, anybody who watched my Daredevil reviews can probably attest to the fact that my lighting sucked. I lit up, I was lit up like a vampire because I hadn't figured out how to light the room that I was in yet. I think over the weekend, I have figured it out. And it was simply just changing the bulb in the light I was using. So that's good. It was a simple fix. And uh, when I'm recording my patreon video because i'm actually doing i'm launching my patreon this week when i do my patreon video i think it will have much better lighting so that's a great that's a good thing but finding your format is almost an artistic artistic journey where you're you're finding your voice you know, that's how a lot of uh, artists and uh, writers term it. You know, they, they say to find your voice, you know, not repeat what others have done, but figure out what you do and how it works for you. Uh, for me, I don't script any of these podcasts i come up with it on the spot i am talking without a script i just had an idea and i turned on the microphone and that's how i do my podcast right now later i might script it maybe if i get a bigger following and if it becomes more important especially if i start answering more people's questions and things like that but right now just talking into the mic seems to work for me because i've got a lot to talk about I actually end up doing a lot of cutting where, you know, I go on a tangent for a while that doesn't really have to do anything to do with anything, and I'll have to cut off, you know, another 10 minutes or so from these episodes. And podcasting is working for me. But for others, maybe podcasting isn't the way to go. Maybe a blog. If you're more of a writer than a talker, maybe a blog is the way to go. Um, for me, I found that a blog is a hard way to start out. You know, I still think that I have less than 100 reads and I have no subscriptions to my blog at all. Um, I have a, you know, just a free uh, mailing list. And I created a form for it, and it's on my blog, and I still have no subscribers eight months later or so. So, you know, not everything works for everybody. So the important part is to figure out how you think and how you do things and to find... A format that works for you. You know, some people post daily. There are people who post all the time. And, you know, those are some of the bigger channels, ones that have uh, a media company behind them. You know, they're part of a network on YouTube and they have a wider. Uh, range and a wider audience so keeping that interest is important and they also have a bigger crew so they can 
plan a few months in advance and pump things out quickly. Quicker than I can, at least. Because I was not prepared for how much planning there was going to be in uh, doing the reviews for Daredevil. I honestly thought that it was going to be really easy, but I ended up putting out a couple episodes, you know, because I was going to do the reviews episode by episode. But after a while, I figured that I didn't really have a lot to say episode by episode. So I did a summary of the season, and I think that went a lot better. But that was an experiment. That was me experimenting with doing reviews and talking to a camera and actually uh, being visually present for my audience, which even though I was just doing it in the same room that I'm recording this podcast right now, it it was a little nerve wracking and I felt a little nervous and especially when my hair was all messed up and I couldn't get it fixed. And, you know, I, 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 it was, it was difficult for me to turn on that camera and start talking. I felt a little nervous about it. And usually I'm, I'm okay in front of the camera, but for some reason right there, I, I had issues. And there are actually a lot of channels that thrive on just voiceover. Um, Watchmojo.com does top 10 lists, and they put maybe three out a day. It's a lot. And they cover a wide range of subjects, and they have a large team. And they only have voiceovers for most of their videos they don't have any uh live footage it's just all footage for the subject that they're talking about and their uh talent doing the voice work so it's It's a very freeform environment where you can make just about any format work. You know, people have made millions of dollars off of uh, Let's Plays, LPing, where you play through a video game and you have commentary. And I'm looking to get into that world as well as another tertiary uh, form of income for me, hopefully. I'm hoping that it'll bring a lot more traffic and it'll bring me a better audience and a bigger audience so that I can uh, so that I can have a Patreon that makes me a little money and hopefully I can steer people towards my stock footage and maybe that'll make me some money and you know it's just a good way to bring people in because those get you know I I was just watching one the other day because I've been doing a lot of research on this stuff in preparation for launching this. And I was watching a playthrough with 83 videos that has over 3 million views. Over 3 million people, or at least 3 million times, this playthrough of 83 30-minute videos has been watched that many times. That's insane. So hopefully that'll help me bring my, my audience in. Because that's incredibly popular. And moving with trends is very important in the digital age. Because it's very easy to become irrelevant. It's very easy to lose your audience because you're not talking about anything new. Yeah, when I did my Daredevil reviews, my, my highest view... My highest viewed video was the second episode of this podcast, and it was at nine views. Now my highest is the intro to that uh, review series, because it was going to be a review series before. And it became my highest with... 56 views in 24 hours. Going with trends is very important. But you can't just 
rely on trends to make you your money. There are some people who have that kind of business model, but eventually it becomes unsustainable. Eventually you have to do more and more ridiculous things until you're finally out of content and you're just done. You know, one of the uh, most lucrative channels on YouTube is a guy named PewDiePie. And now he has to, uh, he's, he's doing a reality TV show on YouTube's streaming platform on YouTube Red, the premium platform for YouTube. Because it seems like he's running out of content. I don't really watch his videos, but it's a lot of the same kind of stuff and you know i think that he he's trying to ride the fame that he had maybe a year or two ago without a ton of success so they're trying to find something else that works and youtube is looking for content for their uh premium platform and having one of the most popular contributors on there for some uh for some premium content is probably a good draw. So in conclusion, format is very important because it gives your audience something to expect when they watch one of your videos. But it's very free form. Many different people use many different formats for their content. And a lot of them work. A lot of people do reviews. A lot of people do let's plays. A lot of people do all kinds of things. And it gets them the viewership and the audience that they're asking for. So when you're looking for your format, you really just need to ask yourself, who am I looking to attract with this content and how can I best do that I suggest doing a ton of research on it I suggest watching a ton of very uh, content on the subject matter that you, that you're intending to talk about uh, subscribe to a few podcasts about it subscribe to a few YouTube channels about it and watch a lot of their videos to figure out what is going to work best for you and then, we can move on from there. We can make our format and follow some of those rules, but also break them and become something unique instead of, you know, working off someone else. You don't want to work off someone else. You know, you don't need to po copy paste someone's format. You know, that that's if it's not plagiarism, it's really close. You need to. Learn from other people's formats, what works and what doesn't, and what will work for you and what won't work for you, and form that into something that's uniquely yours, something that you can enjoy making. Because the bottom line is, if you're not enjoying what you're making, then even if you have 12 million subscribers and you get... you millions of views a day, what have you really earned if you're not enjoying yourself? Good day and good filmmaking.